let's talk about terraform back in terraform back in now basically as far as terraform back in is concerned we are looking at the management of state files so once we talk about terraform back in we are talking about the management of state files and what are these state files state files basically are the way terraform keep track of the resources that have been provide provisioned in your environment so the moment you create ec2 instances or maybe let's say you create ec2 instances using terraform you create vpcs using terraform you create subnets using terraform terraform keeps track of all of these resources that have been provisioned in your environment in state files now with these state files terraform actually knows where what resource is and the current state so if terraform is to destroy or terraform is to apply terraform actually has an understanding of the various resources in your environment for you to manage for you to manage the state files you can actually store the state files in different storage services so you can store your state files using amazon s3 you can store your state files using google cloud you can equally store your state files using azure blob storage and other methods of storing state files once you store the state files in these various store components you can actually manage who has access so you can actually manage access to these state files by locking so you can actually lock you can actually lock these state files to avoid modifications so assuming two developers or three developers want to access your state files at a given time you can lock who has access to those state files using lock so we are going to see how we can implement backends and state locks for our terraform state files let's go into the console and see how to go about that for us to manage state files let's create a new folder which we'll be using for our hands on with managing state files so i come to folder I create a folder 10 terraform back end so for us to understand back end we are going to create a vpc just a basic vpc and then we understand how to manage the state files of our resources with that so let's create a main.terraform for the vpc main.terraform let's create a variables dot terraform let's create an output dot terraform now on our main dot terraform since we want to provision just a vpc it is not going to be that complex so we just do resource the resource that we are creating is uh, aws underscore vpc and then we give the name of our vpc wanda vpc and to create a vpc we need basic components just a cider block cider block so we are going to pass it as a variable var dot cider block And then you can give the tax for the tag let's give a tag for the name and then we give the name um and then we give the name wanda vpc since we've created a variable here for the tax let's come to our variables files and we create a new variable to so we'll be a variable and the name of the variable is cider block as we have on our terraform and then we give specifics the type is a string the description cider block for vpc And then the default, the default, let's have a cider 10.0.0.0 slash 16 for the VPC cider. Now we come back here and we create an output. So we do output and the value is VPC underscore ID and then we come here our value of this output is equal to aws vpc dot wanda 
underscore wonder we call this result wonder vpc so our output should be wonder vpc dot id so the output of this value will be the vpc id now, now to manage back end we need to create a new back end file and for you to manage that we create a new file back end dot terraform now this back end is going to manage the back end of our resources for you to create a terraform back end file you use the word terraform and then you specify the back end which you want to create and in this case since we're using amazon web service we're creating our back end using s3 so we'll store our back end files in s3 now once you configure this the key component needed for your back end file you need to specify the bucket which the state files will be stored next you want to specify the name which you use to reference all the resources that will be stored in the bucket and then also you want to specify the region in which the bucket is found when it's configuring your terraform back end now these are the basic configurations for you to have a terraform back end setup for us to proceed we need to create an s3 bucket and then we give the name of the bucket and the region in which we create a bucket for terraform to understand it as a back end so we come to aws console we come to aws console we search for s3 you go to s3 once you're in s3 we are going to create a new bucket so we come to buckets and then you click on create bucket we are selecting the region us west 2 and then we give the name of the bucket wanda terraform state bucket remember s3 bucket names must be unique and then you allow all these configurations you can disable all public access for the bucket and you acknowledge that you want you don't want public access you can enable bucket versioning and then with that you create the bucket after the bucket has been created we have successfully created wonder terraform state bucket so you can view details of the bucket once you create this bucket we copy the name of this bucket wonder terraform state bucket you copy the name and then you come back to your terraform and you paste the name of the bucket now which region do you want to store the resources or the state files in and we created a bucket in us west 2 so you are going to put us west 2 as the region in which our terraform state files will be stored and then equally the way you want to store the bucket do you want to store the state files you give the name kind of like the folder in which s3 will create so s3 will create a terraform folder and then you store a file called terraform dot terraform states so this is the way terraform will store your state files in the s3 bucket so it's making use of this wonder bucket which you created it is making use of the key that means this folder the folder in which you will be stored and then the name of the file and then it's going to store in the us west 2 region so this is the basic configuration of an s3 back end for terraform state file storage once you do this, let's do Terraform init and then we initialize our back end. So you come to terminal, new terminal, can make this visible. You see it into the new, newly created folder. You do a Terraform init. Now you see initializing the back end. Successfully configured the back end S3. In this case, S3 was configured as a back end and terraform will automatically use this back end unless the back end configuration changes so if you delete this back end file the terraform configuration will no longer be stored in an s3 bucket it will be stored locally once terraform init is complete let's go ahead to do terraform plan terraform plan when you do terraform plan you now see we are going to create a resource wanda vpc and all that now come to our s3 bucket here you see there are no objects in this bucket but after terraform runs the apply it is going to store the state file of this first resource which has just been created in this s3 bucket so let's run terraform apply and see that terraform apply once we run terraform apply we take yes and then the vpc will be created in your environment so 
you can come to your AWS environment. Let's duplicate this tab. So you right click, you duplicate this tab. While this is being duplicated, you can search for the VPC service. So I'm just going to come to services up here and I search for VPC. Once you search for VPC, you select the VPC service here. It should take you to your VPC dashboard. On Terraform side, we have apply complete resources one added zero change zero destroyed and then it gives the output VPC ID as we specified. It gives the ID of the VPC that has been created. Once the apply is complete, you come to your AWS console. If you refresh this bucket, you should see so you can come to properties here. You click objects. If you refresh objects here, you see a new object has been created, Terraform, as we specify in our back. We say you should create a folder, Terraform, and then in this folder, you're going to have a file, Terraform state file. So if you open this Terraform folder, you should see a file which is the Terraform dot Terraform state file, which is the Terraform state file that has been stored in S3 after an apply. So basically, it stores the file Terraform dot Terraform state file. And if you come to your VPC console and you type VPCs, you should see the Wanda VPC that has been created. So this VPC Wanda VPC has been created using this Terraform configuration file, and then the Terraform state was stored in the Terraform state file S3 bucket. Now, for securing this Terraform state file, that's to avoid maybe multiple developers modifying the state files. You can configure a DynamoDB table to lock these state files. So if you want to lock the state files to avoid deletion of your state files or modification of your state files, you can store, you can lock this state file using a Dynamo DB table. So for you to lock the state file, you create a new line of code. So you specify a Dynamo DB table that is going to store the state file. And if you want to encrypt the state, you can actually encrypt. If you want to encrypt it, encrypt equals true. Now, once you create this DynamoDB table, you come back to your AWS console. You type DynamoDB because you want to lock your Terraform state file. So you type DynamoDB. You open DynamoDB in a new tab. You come to the tab. Once DynamoDB comes, DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any skill. So you can use DynamoDB as a NoSQL database on AWS. So to configure DynamoDB to log your Terraform state files, you create a DynamoDB table. You give the name of the table. We can give Wanda State Log Table. Now you must remember that the partition key for this table must be log ID. So as you specify this, this indicates that you actually have to, or this indicates that you want to lock your Terraform state files to avoid simultaneous modification of your Terraform state files in your environment. So once you put the name of the, of the table, Wanda state lock, and you give the lock ID, Wanda lock ID, all you need to do is to create table. Once you click on create table, you can come here and copy the table name, Wanda state log so i copy or well, you can click on it you come here you copy the table name you copy you come here you specify the name of the table wanda terraform state the name was not copied you copy the name of this you copy the name wanda state log right click copy and then you come back here and you paste. Now, once that is done, we need to run Terraform in it again because you have done some modifications on the Terraform backend because you have specified that Terraform will store this backend in an AWS S3 bucket called Wanda Terraform State Bucket, and then it will use the Wanda State Lock DynamoDB table to lock this Terraform state files. So once you have this, you run Terraform in it to initialize the Terraform backend. So you run Terraform in it. And you see there are some configuration changes. So they say you should run Terraform in it reconfigure. So we are going to run Terraform in it reconfigure. 
to configure our back end so you hit enter so when terraform init is complete for us to understand how terraform state logs we can destroy the existing infrastructure in an environment so do terraform destroy and then acquiring state lock because we have initialized a lock now because we got the lock because we specified the lock id and there is no one concurrently trying to access our environment terraform will give us the possibility to delete these resources or those resources in our aws environment so that is basically how s3 backend and dynamo db table lock works for terraform so we have releasing the lock then now destroy complete resources one destroy so that's basically how you can manage Terraform state files using S3 backends and DynamoDB table logs. And once you're done with that, you can make sure you come back to your AWS environment and delete the resources that were created.